Consider, if you will, the 16th and 17th century De Auxiliis controversy, a controversy between the Jesuits and Dominicans regarding the relationship between divine sovereignty and human freedom. The papacy inserted itself into that controversy, but it did so only after the two religious orders began accusing the other of heresy. In this case, not a rare phenomenon. Papal investigations were begun under Pope Clement VIII, but they only came to a conclusion two papacies later, under Pope Paul V. The papal investigation itself included the conduct of 17 public debates between representatives of the principal theological schools, leaving no theological stone unturned. Finally, Paul V resolved the matter by way of decree that prohibited either side from condemning the views of the other, with the Pope reminding each side of the need of humility when delving into the holy mystery of God. A pastoral magisterium does not claim to have all the answers, nor does it provide definitive solutions to every controverted issue. A pastoral magisterium acknowledges the here and now normative character of current church teaching while always keeping open the possibility of new insight. Certainly, church leaders are to be faithful to our doctrinal heritage, yet they serve that heritage best by heeding Pope Francis' injunction to abandon a place of safety and certitude by moving from the center to the peripheries of human existence. As our pastoral leaders become accustomed to meeting the people in the streets, listening to their concerns, attending to their wounds, they will know as through a kind of pastoral connaturality how the church's doctrine can best be employed or, if necessary, reformulated in order to announce God's profligate mercy and solidarity with the poor and suffering. Let me be clear, this is not a repudiation of the necessary role of church doctrine. It is what doctrine looks like when it is actually put to the service of the life of ordinary believers. This is the exercise of a pastoral magisterium. Thank you.